Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on a vintage PCC streetcar from Bowser. I found this a couple months ago on eBay, and it kind of stood out to me just because it was in such bad condition. According to the seller, it doesn't run whatsoever, and the paintwork is just terrible. So I kind of figured, hey, why don't we try to give this thing a new lease on life? I'm kind of up for a project, and uh, yeah, I outbid everybody and ended up winning the auction. Anyways, why don't we get this thing out of the box and we'll figure out what exactly we've got our hands on here. I've got to give props to the seller. They did a very nice job packaging this all up. Well, there it is. Um, it's just as it looked in the pictures. It's in really rough shape. You can see that the paintwork has pretty much gone. The pentagraph's gone. And uh, the drive leaves a lot to be desired. Now, the seller again did claim that this thing was not a runner, but I want to verify that myself. So why don't we take this thing over the track? We'll test it out first, see if we can kind of figure out what's going on with it, and then uh, try to mend it if we can. Now, I don't know what the problem is going to be, but I kind of have my money on a short circuit. I just find that that seems to be a very common issue with these brass and die cast models. But let's give it some power and see if anything happens. And so far, we're not seeing any current draw, so it's not a short yet. Yeah, it's not really shorted. It's got some current draw, but it's not a full on short. Let's try changing the direction here. Yeah, it seems uh, seems we've got a seized drive, so I'm going to cut the power there so we don't burn out the armature. But uh, yeah, let's bring this thing back over to the bench and see if we can figure out why exactly that is. So we've certainly got our work cut out for us with this one, but I don't think it's hopeless. At least we know the electrical system is working to some extent. You know, it's not shorted or anything like that, so that's all good. Anyways, I'm going to attempt to disassemble this. I've never taken one of these apart before, but I do see that there's a screw here, and I believe there should be one here as well. So we'll just try removing that, and hopefully the whole drive will come apart. All right, and here we are inside. It's a pretty simple uh, drive mechanism. Looks like some work's been done on it over the years. I think this is probably a replacement wire. Uh, the commutator has certainly seen better days. That is uh, quite dirty there, so I think that that's certainly going to need some work. But uh, I guess we could uh, take a controller and just try hooking up some power directly to the leads. I don't know, is it seized? Yeah, okay. Maybe the problem is down here. No, this is certainly not promising. Kind of looks like maybe some moisture might have gotten here at some point. Oh, okay, yeah, that explains a lot. This has not run for uh, an awful long time. I can tell you that much right here. Wow. Um, yeah, that is possibly the worst drive I've ever seen. Man, this grease is just wild. <sighs> yeah, wow. This is probably the uh, same grease that uh, this model left the factory with some 70 years ago. So yeah, it's uh, it's long past its due date, and uh, you can definitely see too that the metal has oxidized a little bit. So we're we're gonna need to get all of that out of there. But uh, hopefully the motor is still good. I'm gonna have to keep uh, an eye on the uh, order of all these gears because they're uh, helix gears, so they have to be placed a certain way. Anyway, we'll try to pull them all out because clearly all of this needs to be cleaned. This one doesn't even want to come out because it's uh, actually seized in place there. Well, at least now that we've got all that stuff out of the way, we can see that the motor is in fact uh, not seized. It is turning still, so that's a good sign. So we just need to figure out a way to clean all of this up, probably work on the rear truck, rewire the whole thing, and then uh, if we can get around to it, I'd really love to uh, repaint this shell and actually kind of restore it to its glory days, maybe even in a bit of a different paint scheme.
So with the drive mostly disassembled, I think we'll start cleaning up some of these parts here. Now, usually when encountering grease like this, I would just use dish soap, which honestly does a pretty good job at cutting through thick old oil like this. Uh, if it was thinner, I'd probably just use a bit of rubbing alcohol, and that doesn't work too bad as well. Uh, but recently with some of my outboard motor projects, I've been uh, using this gunk uh, engine cleaner, and uh, this stuff seems to work wonders on several of my projects. I'm not sponsored, but uh, you know, you might be thinking this is not a good thing to use on a model train, but it says right here, uh, safe on most underhood rubber plastic paint when used as described. So if that's true, it should be okay with all the little plastic components while still chewing through the grease. So we'll do a bit of an experiment here. Um, this is not something that I necessarily recommend because I don't know what the results are going to be. But I figure we'll try it out and uh, hope for the best here. So we'll let that soak for uh, probably about an hour and we'll come back and see how well those parts are looking. Well, that's certainly not so great. I ended up just leaving the parts all in the solution overnight and it looks like it did a pretty good job at uh, cleaning everything up. It chewed through a lot of the grease. I mean, you can see there's still a little bit that we'll have to scrub through uh, here and there, but uh, for the most part, this really is not all that bad. So yeah, we'll do some uh, final cleaning on these and then I think we can start to uh, reassemble this whole thing. You can see the degreaser didn't get every single bit. I mean, this is definitely loosened up, but uh, didn't chew through all of it. The original formula of this would probably work a little bit better, but uh, this one is supposed to protect, which is something that I kind of like for uh, all of these components. Uh, maybe it doesn't do as good a job for cutting through the grease. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think of uh, its performance in the comments. So with the majority of these parts all cleaned up, I think we'll start putting things back together. I'll start off with the rear truck, and I believe that the isolated side is supposed to go on this side, so we'll put both of those in. You can tell these are isolated because of the rings right there. Just a little bit of fresh oil.
the rear truck, I was able to get this all pretty well cleaned up. I'm happy with it. I mean, optimally, you'd probably want to take out the worm gear, but uh, unfortunately, just with the condition of the uh, armature here, I'm a bit concerned that something might end up breaking. You know, those uh, windings might be pretty brittle, and if you apply a lot of heat to here, you might run into a problem. I don't know. Maybe it would be worth it, but as far as I'm concerned, this is all turning quite nicely, so uh, I think we'll just kind of let it slide. Now, I don't exactly remember the order of the gears, however, I do know that both of these have to go this way. I'm going to put both the isolated sides this way. I believe this is how this truck is supposed to be. I don't know. But yeah, once we uh, install both these, we can actually kind of start to make out what the order is. I believe that is the uh, correct order, but there's only one way to find out. I'm going to throw some oil on these things. And I'll also throw some grease in there because uh, metal gears definitely need a thick oil. Well, both the wheel sets seem to be turning, so I guess I got it right. So with this all turning nicely, I think the next step is going to be working on the motor. Hopefully I can get this whole thing back together. That might be a little bit tricky, but uh, I'll just kind of do it one piece at a time. I'm really hoping that the armature on this thing is even good. I mean, you know, I've just disassembled and put together this drive all nicely for a motor which might not even work. I don't know. Most of the time the armature is not the problem. This is going to be quite the moment of truth here. I really don't know if this is actually going to work or not. Alright. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's not doing much, is it? Alright, I've noticed something a little bit strange right here, which is that if you look at the spring on this side, it's not soldered to the brush, but on this side it is. And they didn't do a great job. I don't even know if this is the original brush, but you can see um, as this turns, that piece of metal right there that's sticking out on the bottom is actually rubbing up against that, which is not good. So we're going to just try cleaning that up a little bit, and hopefully that will fix it. Well, after about 20 minutes of messing around with the brushes and everything else, I finally got this thing running. I don't know what was going on with it, but uh, as you can see now, um, it runs. And surprisingly, the motor's actually got a little bit of torque left in it, which is not something I was expecting. You know, with an old magnet like this, these things are usually kind of clapped out, but uh, this one's still got some life left in it, and it doesn't really have to haul a whole lot of weight, so I don't know. Things might be okay for it. Anyways, uh, we have to get some sort of a wiring system now uh, between this truck and this brush right here. And then we'll do a track test, and then I think after that we'll uh, focus on the shell, because it could definitely use some love as well. <laughs> Went and got this fresh piece of wire, got it all spliced up, so we're just going to get that all soldered in. I think it should work well. It's nice and flexible, so uh, as this moves around it should just pivot with it, which will be nice. Let me grab my soldering iron. All right, well, let's take this thing over to the track and see if it will do anything. I really hope this thing works. I mean, I know it did move on the bench, but 
Out on the track, it's just such a different situation. Okay, I'm seeing the motor go. Yeah, well, it's it's moving. The problem is that I think it just doesn't have enough weight. Hopefully when this thing has its shell on, it won't have these sorts of issues. Let's see if just by adding a little bit of weight, if we can get, get it to go. Still nothing. Seems like the metal on this rear truck might be a little bit out of spec in touching the rails, which is causing some short circuits. So I'll see if I can fix that. So I just bent the metal right down here up a little bit, but while I was working on it on the bench, I also noticed that it just doesn't seem to be sitting quite right. That's when I realized the frame is also super bent. You see how bad that is? So I'm gonna try to straighten that out too and see if that can maybe make things a little better. Okay, let's see if all that work will do any good. Not quite. Well, it's now around an hour later. It turned out that the motor needed a lot more work than I was expecting. I brought it back over to the workbench, and it turned out that that brush was still chafing. It clearly was not an original part. Somebody was definitely doing some work on this thing at some point, and uh, it just was not working out. So I tried to shave it down with a razor, and it actually ended up crumbling in my hands. So I went through my parts bin, and I ended up finding an RSO brush. And that was a pretty similar size to the original, as you can see. So what I did was I just bent the metal, resoldered the wire, and uh, now this thing seems to work. It's nothing uh, out of this world, but uh, just the fact that it's, you know, moving under its own power is something that I am uh, quite happy to see. So I think at this point we'll uh, go work on the shell. The you know the paint work on that is uh, certainly not ideal. So yeah, we'll uh, work on this, and then hopefully the added weight will uh, improve how well this runs too. So hopefully it won't be too hard to remove the paint on this. I mean, most of it's already coming off on its own, but uh, these old paints can be pretty tough sometimes. Um, this, I think, was the window setup. It's not looking so good. I don't really know if it's worth salvaging or not, so I might just uh, scrap that. But uh, as for the shell, we got uh, the strongest paint remover you can legally buy in Canada. So we'll have a go with that, see if we can uh, lift this paint. Well, here it is after being rinsed off. I think the paint stripper did a pretty good job at removing all the old paint. I mean, there are a few spots here and there, but for the most part, things look pretty tidy, so I think we'll move on to actually painting this thing. I've been trying to decide on a paint scheme for a while now, and I'm pretty sure Toronto is gonna be my choice. I just feel like it'd be really cool to add a uh, big red rattler to the layout, as Stompin' Tom would put it. I'm no expert at painting. I really don't know how well this is gonna turn out, but I can't imagine it's gonna be any worse than it was before, so uh, let's give it a shot. So the paintwork didn't turn out perfectly, so I'm now just kind of correcting little spots anyway. There was this uh, little section right here where uh, this object caused a little bit of the paint to uh, sort of overspray. So what I've done is I've actually put some red spray paint into this cap, and we're going to use this toothpick as almost like a bit of a fountain pen and uh, just sort of correct the damage.
Well, I'm now finished with the painting. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I mean, it's certainly not perfect. There are a few blemishes here and there. In retrospect, I probably should have sanded this down a little bit before painting it, but I didn't quite realize how jagged the metal was. And I'm also not too big about sanding things made out of lead. I don't know. But uh, yeah, either way, I ended up just adding a few more uh, details uh, here and there just to make it look a little bit better. And I did touch up the paintwork a little bit to the best of my abilities. So I think at this point, this thing is ready to be put back together. I did a few more uh, little pieces of work too on the drive. It turned out that this was causing some short circuits, which I kind of suspected, you know, having this piece of metal uh, touching this frame. So I just put this little insulator under it just to make sure that that can't happen. And I uh, attached the wire directly onto the bolt just so that there's a nice solid electrical connection because I don't think that this right here is actually OEM. So uh, yeah, that's not so good. Before we go uh, putting this all back together though, I've got one last detail, which I think is really gonna finish this thing off, and that is a trolley pole. And uh, I don't know, I just had some fun making this out of a piece of handrail. Got some glue on the end there to make the little wheel which uh, goes on the top, and uh, I just found this piece of plastic which I think will fit in pretty well there. So we'll glue that on, and then I actually wanna add some thread to uh, make the uh, little harness that they use to uh, lower the wire if it comes off the uh, wire there. I imagine when this thing left the factory, there probably was already a pole there, but uh, it's, that's all long gone, so we'll add this on. Just quickly uh, shorten down the pole, I just found it looked a little bit out of scale. You can always change it up a little bit later on, but for now I just want to focus on actually getting this uh, piece of thread on there. I don't really know what the best way to do this would be. I tie a knot and then maybe slide it up, that would probably be fairly easy to do. Alright, I kind of wanted to hang down a little bit just like the real thing. It was really interesting years ago at the uh, Seashore Trolley Museum in Maine. Uh, we were riding a trolley and one of these uh, poles here actually did come off the wire. And uh, all the guys running the museum, they were so happy that this happened because uh, everybody, you know, the, the cars just shut down and uh, everyone was kind of confused. But they were like, oh, this is an historical event. This used to happen on the daily basis, you know, when they were running these things in real life. And uh, they got out and uh, they showed people how they uh, reconnected this thing. I just thought that that was kind of funny. Anyways, uh, I think I'll probably just put a little drop of CA on the back of this, honestly, and then... Uh, and then we'll just kind of glue it on that way. I'm just going to cut this a little bit shorter. I think that that will look just about right. And I'll just put the tiniest dab of CA in. I'll just try to kind of connect it on. You don't really ever want to put CA directly on whatever object you're working on, but um, I think it will work best in this case. And now I just need to get it to, to kind of touch that. Yeah, there we are. I'll let that dry. All right, well, the adhesive seems to be all dried, so I think we'll get this whole thing back together if we can. I'm going to put the screw in the middle. As you might remember, it was at the front in the beginning, but I think just being in more of a central point will be beneficial. Hopefully the uh, threads are still good. All right, and it is all back together. I realized uh, off camera I forgot to put the metal post in from earlier, so I just quickly added that on too. But uh, yeah, I think this thing is all ready to go, so let's take it over to the track and get old Rattler sparking through. Well, folks, this is it. Moment of truth. Will this thing go? Yeah! She runs! Look at that! It doesn't look like it's going too bad. I just can't tell you how happy it makes me to see something that I just spent so many hours working on over the course of several days just finally going around the layout. Possibly for the first time in 30 years, 40 years, maybe 50 years, who knows? I mean, uh, judging by that grease, this thing had to have been sitting an awful long time. So uh, yeah, is it ever great just to have given it a new lease on life? And it's flying around the layout with new paint, a rebuilt drive, and it's not doing too bad. Yeah, this... Couldn't be happier with the results is what I'm trying to say.
Well, I've now been running this thing for about 10 or so minutes and it's just been running like a top. It hasn't had any problems. It doesn't even hiccup, which is really impressive to see. So I'm quite impressed. But what I really want to find out is what kind of low speed this thing can do because uh, at a high speed you know it's easier for these things to run but low speed is always the indication of how healthy a drive is. So we're just going to slowly bring it down here and just see where it kicks out. Bringing it down we're at about uh, 7 volts, 5 volts, still going. We're down to 4 volts and it's really hard to see but uh, it's actually still moving so that is very impressive most of the time with these older motors they're not as great with the low speed and you know I don't know what kind of gearing this thing has but with what it has I can't imagine the reduction is too significant so that five pole is still doing a very good job let's see we go even lower yeah we're down to uh, just about three volts right there and uh, yeah it's starting to kick out right there at about three volts it's still moving a little bit very hard to see but that's ridiculous I mean uh, that is super impressive so I am very happy with that that is amazing I really did not expect it to be able to uh, maintain such a slow speed but what I really want to find out now is how well it can actually be a streetcar so we're gonna try to run it on my super dodgy streetcar track which is all homemade it's not very good but you know what it might just be able to do it let's see Well, that is remarkable. Even on this super dodgy, uneven track, it's capable of going through here. Pretty impressive. Well, folks, I think that that's going to be about it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I certainly enjoyed working on this thing. I mean, it took quite a bit of effort to get it going again, but I'm so happy with the results. This is probably the first time this trolley's been riding the rails in many decades, and hopefully we'll have many more decades to come now that it's all rebuilt. Prior to this, I don't think it had too much of a bright future considering that the gearbox was completely seized. It had a terrible coat of paint. You know, there was really nothing too good about it, but you know, here it is all rebuilt, fully overhauled and riding the rails again. So anyways, I think we'll finish things off there. With that, I just want to thank you all so much for watching.